Sometimes you just gotta make a bite. Oh, there he is. Look at that. Great big one. Ooh, ooh. Mm, this spot's gotta have fish. I ah, got him. Good one, boy. Good one. Nice fish. <laughs> that did not take too long. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> To catch fish, you have to be where they live, when they live there. And if fish never move, finding them would be easy. But such is not the case. All species move within their environment to meet their basic needs. Some needs are seasonal, like spawning. Others recur on a daily basis, such as the needs for food and safety. Understanding both seasonal and daily needs helps you narrow down. Hooked up, hooked up with the big fish and intercept fish movements in productive fishing spots. Not like 10 fish like this in 40 minutes. And that's only half the battle, because once you find fish, you still have to get them to bite. That means choosing a presentation that fits both the species you're after and the conditions you encounter on any given day. There. Today, on the edge, we go after pre-spawn smallmouth bass at a time of year when subtle changes in size, shape, and speed of soft baits they are eating, baby, they are eating that bait, I mean they're on it, can be major factors in determining fishing success. Look at that sucker, huh? <laughs> How's that for a brown bass? Then we go speed trolling for summer pike, which are aggressive by nature and often eager to strike large, lifelike lures that approach within range. Look at that. That is a beauty pike, man. You can really trip their triggers with the proper combination of lure depth, speed, vibration, and action. Cover lots of water. These things will bite. You're going to get lots of action. Being in the right place at the right time with the right lures and tactics is about as good as it gets. Aww. He's got a light run at three pounder. I'm talking <laughs> some real fish here. Close captioning provided by Northwest Ontario, Canada. Today, soft baits represent the largest and most diverse family of fishing lures used for bass. Why? The simple answer is soft baits work deep, shallow, and in between. They work in weeds, around wood, over rocks, and for suspended bass. Soft baits come in all shapes and sizes, from big and bold, to small and subtle. And as you might expect, all baits don't work equally well for all species of bass. Largemouth bass baits, for example, are generally bigger and bulkier than those used for smallmouth bass. The best soft baits factor in a combination of bass mouth size, preferred forage, and appetite. Let's join Al and Troy Linder as they examine the soft bait size factor for smallmouth bass. Oh man, look at it. Oh, I love it. I love it, baby. I love it. Come up again. Oh, look at that. Look at the size of that sucker. <laughs> Oh man, early season smallmouth fishing. I dream about it all winter long. I can't wait to get out on, on the open water. In my part of the world, seven to 10 days after ice out, I'm out here chasing these big tanks like this. He's got a fish, go get him, get him, Bubba. He's on him, he's on him. 
Yeah, I threw back to that same same spot where you had that one. It's early in the season. Water temperature is uh, where we're at, 53 to 54 degrees. That generally means jerk baiting, hair jigging, and some type of soft bait. And there's really a pretty good handful of soft baits that these smallmouth will eat all year long. Boy, that's my dad's fighting one right now. Oh, Depth and speed are very important, and especially when I'm targeting smallmouth this size. Shape, size, action is very important. And four inch, that's the magic number when it comes to targeting big trophy smallmouth like this. In general, three different styles of soft baits excel for smallmouth bass based on how you present them. For swimming retrieves, the classic four inch swimming grub is a consistent producer, especially when smooth, gentle swimming motions work best. A throbbing paddle tail minnow is a more aggressive option, while a fork tail minnow is a subtler choice. All three of these profiles work particularly well when smallmouth are feeding on minnows. For bottom bouncing, a Trigger X 4 inch tube or flapping grub works wherever smallmouth swim. Our favorite delivery system is a VMC half moon jig head, lift dropped on and off or scratched along the bottom. For really inactive smallies, we like either a 4 inch flutter worm dressed on a 1 16th ounce half moon jig head or a drop shot setup using a 4 inch Trigger X Pro Worm or Trigger X Minnow. VMC's unique spin shot hook eliminates line twist and enhances soft bait action. Realistically, yeah, yeah. these baits will catch smallmouth bass anywhere in the country under virtually any conditions. He ain't got one bigger than that one. Uh, yeah, that one's... Maybe he does. I don't know. Well, he's landed. No, no, mine be. He's oh. got a white running three pounder. I'm talking some real fish here. You know, these these high percentage spawning areas in, the, in these flats, when you look at a flat and the water temperature starts getting into around 50 degrees, there's certain things you look for. Prior to this, these fish were on these inside corners on the sharp vertical breaks. And as that water starts going up, these babies start coming out of that deep water and moves out on these flats with the scattered rocks. When she gets to 50s, that's what where you're going. And on calm days, you can see these fish swimming up in droves on some lights. I was watching that side imaging. I keep an eye on that, looking for some of these scattered boulders off the left and to the right, even in deeper water and up shallower, and looking for those ones with the big dark shadow on it. And have had a couple fish off of those. They seem to be really key. I'm using Quantum angling edge medium spinning rod and it's absolutely perfect for light presentations like this flap and grub use an 832 braid on this quantum reel we kind of drag it along i'm dragging it a little bit till i feel some of those rocks and then especially in this, with this braid and this lighter rod you can really feel the bottom really nice and shaking it just when i come to the base of those rocks like that kind of shaking it in place and then dragging it up and over and kind of shaking it on the other side of it and you get a lot of hits like that. This time of the year at this water temperature you know in the low 50s some of the best smallmouth fishing you're ever ever going to experience. You get big bunches of fish you know get into, in, into a confined area where they're going to eventually end up bedding. And when you're in the low 50s, like this high 40s, they are eating, baby. They are eating that bait. I mean, they're on it. They, you know, that's the, the magic of it. Oh, ooh, ooh, look at this one, Troy. Looks a little uh, better. Yeah. That one a ain't no better. lightweight, huh? <laughs> that one's nice. That one ain't no lightweight, baby. <laughs> ooh, this is a pig. Just a pig. Where do you where do you see this donkey form? Oh man, she's she's big. Look at that sucker, huh? <laughs> How's that for a brown bass? 
you know, of the different soft baits and smallies, big smallies like this, smallies, any size, eat soft baits all year long, any time in the open water period. And when you're chasing fish like this, you got to have a variety of baits. You want some horizontal baits, vertical baits, depending on the mood of the fish to kind of cover your fishing. Uh, a, a lot of things come into play. And some of the newer baits, or one of them that really come on the scene, is what we're fishing here. It's called the flap and grub. And uh, it's very soft tail, big, wide, wide tail. It's got a complete different action. The most subtle of subtles would be the tube. The most active of this kind of four inch bait would be the curly tail grub. This kind of fits in between. And it's a floppy, flippy action that these fish have not seen. There, got one. Whoa. And I think this is number, I don't know if this is number five or six on, on this bait. Another pig. Look at that one. Yeah, come here. Come on. Oh, I need that one. I gotta get that one. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, this is, oh, come here, come here. Nice fish, another nice, beautiful smallmouth. Yeah, I think this is get the size of that smallmouth. And I think this, after five fish on this bait, look at that, five fish on this bait, all like that, That's a, that is a tank. Hey, for more detailed information or to purchase any products you've seen on this show, go to lindermedia.com. North American waters contain four members of the genus Esox, ranging from the largest species, musky, to its smallest two cousins, redfin and chain pickerel. Between these size extremes lies the most widely distributed member of the long and lean toothy critter clan, the Northern Pike. Ranging from Alaska to Nebraska to the maritime provinces of Eastern Canada, pike abound in a wide array of cool water environments. Trophy pike fishing is often associated with fly-in fishing excursions to remote Canadian outposts. Yet fish of surprising stature are also available in drive-to destinations, if you know where to look and how to catch them. Well, we're fishing one of the best lakes in Northwest Ontario, famed Lake of the Woods. We're covering some water. We just got done with about the most beautiful weather that you'll see all year in early September, and we just got pounded with the cold front. So our theory is that the fish have moved off the shallow flats, we are starting to use these rock extensions like you uh, would typically fish in the fall from pike and muskies, and we're just covering ground. We're still moving the waters warm enough where we can boogie along real quick and contour trolling, covering water. Lake of the woods, lake of options, and uh, yeah, and we got a shot at big fish of all big species. Fish, yeah. This is the time of year when this is so effective trolling like this. It's unbelievable how many fish you can put in the boat. And we're going to be able to cover a lot of water and fish a lot of spots that way. And you know, if you're coming up to a place like Lake of the Woods or fishing the new body water, there's no better way than to troll to find fish and to find spots. So that's what it's all about. We're going to get this guy back and yeah. keep moving along. Beauty. In fall, cooling water temperatures entice big pike to return to mid-depth weed and rock areas, back within the traditional range of angling efforts. The steep dropping portions of healthy green weed beds, shoreline points, neck down areas, and offshore humps attract both bait fish deserting the shallows and hungry pike on the prowl. As big pike gather along the outer edges of main lake structures, they're hungry for anything that swims within their range, be it ciscos, suckers, or large lures fished within their strike zone. You know, having the mapping option for, for doing this is really makes makes it a lot easier. We can, you know, run really close to those 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 bumps that stick out off the shore and, and keep our baits in the zone that, like you say, that 10 to 14, 8 to 14 feet that we're trying to target. 
a lot easier than if you don't have the GPS there to keep you in line. Tell you another thing, all the years I've spent running a tiller boat, yeah. you know, whether it's a 50, 60, 75 horse, this power steering is a beauty, man. Oh. I mean, you, there's no sore shoulders when you get out, you know, if you make a big run. Yeah. You run some of those motors, you take your hand off for a second, and it's just, so these are just, from a safety standpoint too, much safer, great deal. When you can dial those RPMs down too, you got speed control, everything just right yeah. there, you know. And also I've got this new prop that Mercury's got. It's a four blade, it's a Spitfire. It's an aluminum prop, not a stainless prop. And the thing gives you great acceleration the whole shot, but also it's got a lot of bite. And when you're contour trolling a lot of times, you're gassing it hard to make turns. You're coming up from 20 feet into four, and you gotta just gun it to move quick. And that thing just bites and it pushes you along so well. There we go. Ooh, yeah. Boy, kicking your butt. <laughs> Here out they control the ship. Okay, I'm in reverse. All right. He's doing the roll, so I don't know if it's a real big one, but. Sure. Nice husky fish, though. Yeah, they're fat. They're just really thick. Pork. Woo! -hoo! Woo! Look at that. <laughs> Nut job. Woo! Okay, perfect. You hold yeah. them there. I'm going to pop my X wrap out of there. When we fish Northwest Ontario for pike, we tend to favor the larger bodies of water with more carrying capacity to grow trophy sized fish. We fish lakes like Rainy, Lake of the Woods, and Lac Sewell, but the truth is they're among hundreds of phenomenal waters within this region that grow big pike, especially those where camp operators encourage catch and release to ensure great fishing for their customers. A big tool in this system is the rod that we're using. This is our eight foot Linder's Angling Edge Technique Series rod. This is an awesome rod for doing this type of fishing. But it also works, Jim did a catfish piece on spinners with this rod. We've shot uh, walleye bottom bouncers, walleye trolling stuff with this rod, hooked up, hooked up with the big fish. Oh, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And it's just absolutely perfect for the system. You can see how the tip is just nice and soft and you can see the drag is really loose. You don't want to have a tight drag. Yep, I'm good, buddy. You don't want a tight drag with this system. It's all about nice and soft and easy so you're not tearing hooks out when you're going five miles an hour. That's a nice one though. Come here, buddy. Ooh. He's gonna go one more time, Jeff. He's got a little spunk in him yet. I can see it. I don't want you to hook with that, that trouble there. There, you done fighting. Here's the other cool thing. As we're fishing with the super line right now, this is a no stretch line. This is the suffix metered fuse. And if you're not fishing with line counter reels, like this is a rod that I end up bass fishing with and using a lot of things for, so I don't have a line counter on it. I've just got a standard smoke 100 size reel on here. And I can measure how much line I've got out with the colors. So every 25 feet changes color. So right now I'm running 75 feet back Jeff's running 100 feet back on our baits, that, and they're not crossing. And we don't have to guess, just cast out so far. It's really an awesome system, and you can duplicate it. So with the flat wrap, I've been having the action at 75, and for him with the X-Wrap, he's been having the action at 100. So we got a good system, and we haven't been tangled yet. For contour trolling, we carry a variety of crankbaits. The size 16 Rapala flat wrap is certainly one of my all-around favorites. Rappel is Super Shad and size 14 x are also two mainstays. x wrap Magnums in sizes 15, 20, and 30 are perfect tools for covering depths in that 15 to 40 foot range. Storm's Giant Flat Stick, the Flat Stick 16 in both jointed and straight models have a reputation for producing the big fish of the trip on numerous occasions. As far as color goes, it's usually best for one angler to try running a natural forage pattern while the other experiments with more exotic color combinations. And always let the fish tell you what they prefer. Wow, what a slob, dude. That thing is big, huh? <laughs> Ernie, look at how beautiful that fish is, Jeff. <laughs> look at that. That is a beauty pike, man. That's hey, what it's all about. Yeah, you want a good time, action, big fish, contour trolling, with stick baits like the X wrap and the flat wrap, it's unbelievable action on these shield lakes. And it works anywhere you got got big fish like this. Yeah. Walleyes, pike, muskies, whatever. Awesome.
Big pike often desert the shallows in favor of deep, cool water in the summer. In pike trophy patterns details where they go to beat the heat and how to catch them when they do. It's part of our Angling Edge instructional DVD collection, available at anglingedge.com. This is one of my all-time favorite Bibles. It's titled The American Patriots Bible, and it talks about many influential people and their different experiences in life. Most of you know who J.C. Penney is. Let me read this to you. First of all, it says, All of mankind searches for meaning and purpose in life. Earthly goals that do not lead to God only bring dissatisfaction, frustration, and uncertainty. American businessman J. Cash J.C. Penney came to a similar conclusion. Through hard work and a thrifty lifestyle, J.C. Penney succeeded in building one of America's most prestigious retail franchises. But during the Great Depression, heavy financial losses caused him enormous stress, which led to a life-threatening illness. While in the hospital, believing he was going to die, Penny wrote a farewell letter to his wife and his son. When he awoke the next morning, he went for a walk down the hallway of the hospital and heard singing coming from the chapel. He went in the chapel and listened with a heavy heart. The song, God Will Take Care of You, spoke to him deeply. In a life-transforming instant, Penny discovered that God was there to help. From that day on, my life has been free from worry, he later declared. Even in the midst of potential life-threatening circumstances, J.C. Penney, along with the preacher of Ecclesiastes, found the answer to all of life, love of God. Hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you in the water. Hey, I sure want to take an opportunity to thank all our sponsor partners for making this show possible. And if you like what you see, let them know and support them. For more information, check us out at anglingedge.com, Facebook, or the YouTube channel. Hey, thanks for watching.